You know, Paul, I had a great time at our live feed, you know, coming back out of the out of the bullpen and you know, getting on the field and actually playing a little bit. Even though you bullpen, huh? you were called you were cust- you were customarily known as the closer of the show. Um, it was fun to get back and talk with Hashtag Nation. we got a lot of new uh, members. We wanted to say a, a shout-out to all the new members of the premium content that we're going to be dropping this week for you as well. Paul and I got a lot of things planned for you guys. But it was very interesting. The rankings of the AFC East quarterbacks this by certain individuals who probably aren't don't have a pass to come eat chicken wings in Buffalo anymore. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be big uh, do not feed this man signs at tailgates. <laughs> that being said, Paul uh, Paul had the specific names. We talked about it. We thought it was preposterous. We talked about it on the live stream. Just briefly hinted on the fact that we were going to be doing this and talking about it. But uh, the one general consensus for a lot of the, the individuals who were picking these things was that Allen was ranked third in his own division. Yeah. As far as quarterback play goes, he was actually ranked behind a guy who got mono and a guy who didn't pass a physical. <laughs> right. Yeah. At least Allen's got a pulse. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like it's like major league. This guy here is dead. <laughs> Cross him off then. <laughs> But that being said, is this just to stir the pot because there's no news? Or is this actually do, – do, do, do analysts like Ryan Clark or, you know, Field Yates, it's some of the other names that you, you, I know you told me before when we were talking about it, do they really, Do you think they really feel this way or is this going to sell – is this for clicks? Is this clickbait? Is this clickbait? Well, I mean, first off, I'm sure a lot of people sip the potential Kool-Aid, right? You're talking about Darnold, who was, you know, number two overall pick. You got Tua, who everybody thought was the best QB in the draft, uh, minus the physical issues, yes. right? And then you have Josh Allen back on board, followed by whoever happens to be starting for New England, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yes. Whoever happens to be starting for New England. So I, I don't know, man. I, you know, I know players are starting to see Buffalo a little bit differently, um, Quentin Jefferson actually had mentioned that team, you know, players see Buffalo as a place to go play. Mm-hmm. He did a press conference earlier this week talking about it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if the analysts are really there yet. Right. Is, was that game in Houston terrifying enough for people to say, whoa, 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 let's pump the brakes on Josh Allen. And, and you're right. Rank a guy who missed games because of mono and follow it up with a guy who might not even play this season is being ranked ahead of him. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it. I, you know what? And I'm glad you brought up the the elephant in the room that is the potential Kool-Aid that a lot of these analysts end up drinking mm-hmm. a lot when, when they want to talk about quarterbacks, when they want to talk about any kind of player, any kind of position. I mean, on the stream, we, we, we hinted at um, <clears throat> the rankings for the top five cornerback duos, and Buffalo wasn't on it. So mm-hmm. I find that very hard to believe. And if you guys want the stream – um, it'll be just a previous episode that we did as well. Um, and hey, by the way, turn that red subscribe button gray. You guys want to subscribe and get all the content for the Buffalo Bills. Um, that being said, as far as coming into the NFL, because this is the one way, this is the one point that I will concede. If all three of those guys, because I don't know if we're talking about Jared Stidham, are we keeping him in the basement of this discussion? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Apologies, Pats fans. If you're a Patriots fan, you're watching this channel. You someone stir, steered you the wrong way. I don't know. What to tell <laughs> but that being said, if you have Darnold, Tua, and Allen all coming into the pros at the same time, there's an argument to be made. And I don't want to make enemies, but mm-hmm. as far as a polished NFL product, which I don't think we don't know if Tua is, I don't think Darnold is, and Allen is not yet. Right. These guys still have a lot to prove, but coming into the NFL, if you all three of them came out the same year and they all went to their teams, if you were to rank them, Darnold would probably be the most polished, followed by Tua, who has the most experience in big games. Right. And then you have Allen, who is the wild card that has – it's just like that mold of clay that you could just make into your own as far as your perfect quarterback because he right. has all the physical tools. Fast forward to what's actually going on in the NFL. Right. Okay. Tua's coming in. He's got some injuries. He's got a lot of question marks. 
you, I'll leave the Ryan Fitzpatrick comment for you because it's hysterical and I love every time you bring it up. You got Darnold, like you said, he had the he had the mono last year. He's with Adam Gase, which a lot of people don't feel is a very good pairing for the development for a quarterback. Yeah. And I understand that. Right. People yep. like to harken back, well, Adam Gase was with Peyton Manning. No, 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 no. It's it's stop. Okay. Let's just stop. Mm-hmm. He was the, Manning was the OC on that team. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> But all that being considered, now we move to Allen. We move to Josh Allen. Has he made progress? Has he made progress from year one to year two? Absolutely. Do we think that he's going to make the progresses from year two to year three? Yeah. Here's my question: Does Chan Gailey, Adam Gase, and Brian Dable play a factor in why they rank them where they rank them? I mean, people love Adam Gase, man, and I just don't get it. I don't get it. And Shane Gailey coming out of retirement, I'm excited to see what that looks like. But <laughs> he I was mean, paired with Ryan, though he was paired. He with was. Patrick. He sure was. <laughs> he sure was. He and Donald Jones and uh, Donald Jones. You did let's, not. Yeah, let's see what other what other references can I bring up from that nightmare? You're throwing so much spaghetti at the wall right now, and none of it's sticking to the wall. <laughs> It's, you know, I think I, I think you bring up a good point there where if you said if these three quarterbacks were in the draft right now, where would you go? Right. And I think there's always this thing in the draft where they talk about, well, he's the most pro ready. Well, Josh Rosen was said to be the most pro ready over Josh Allen. Right. Like I. That's that's the thing. Right. People say that. Oh, he's more pro ready. Well, what Rosen. does that mean? I forgot about what does that mean? What does that mean? Right. All those quarterbacks in the division now, really, when you think about it, right? You got Darnold, Rosen, and Allen. So three out of the four that were drafted in that class are all in the same division now. And, you know, if I, I, I don't get me wrong. I really like Tua Tagovailoa. I think I think from a from a prospect standpoint, mm-hmm. um, he he's a great chance to take if you have a player who can start at that position already. And I don't really think, you know, Miami's taking some chances here. Um but the one thing that gets me, right, is if you take a look, it's not the Tua comparison, it's the Darnold comparison, right? So if you take a look at Darnold and take a look at Allen, here's stats, right? Darnold on this on his career, uh, 5,800 yards, 36 okay. touchdowns, 28 interceptions, 81.1 quarterback rating, okay. if, you, if that matters, right? Yeah, Allen, yeah. 5,100 yards, 30 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, 72 point or 78.2 quarterback rating. Okay. That's that's not the that's not the one that I want to talk about though. Let's talk about rushing touchdowns because Josh Allen has as many touchdowns as Saquon Barkley does. That's a so great stat. How in God's name is he third? Like how? That's why I hearken to the who are they who are they what are they working with? Now, how could you, in your right mind, see, now here's the thing that gets me. What what they're effectively saying is that going into year, this year, going into the 2020 season, you're telling me that those other quarterbacks surrounded themselves with better weapons than what Josh Allen has currently. Mm -hmm. Because you you feel that they're going to be better. Mm -hmm. Now, Josh Allen, like you said, he had uh, 30 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, 5,100 yards. We have to do, we we do have to make the, the mention that um, Allen was hurt for a few uh, a few games, I believe, one or two, mm-hmm. his rookie season. Mm-hmm. But then Darnold missed four. So even mm-hmm. though that there's a 700 yard comparison difference there, I understand that. Well, rookie, no rookie season. Allen missed. He missed a bunch of games. I think with he that started elbow. 12. I think he started 12. Yeah. Um, well, no, he, he must have started 11 because he didn't start the first week. I think he missed. I'll pull. I'll pull it up. I'll pull no, up because we we had compared his first six games during his last six games. Oh, injury, that's injury, right. Injury. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so he started to, and I understand that, but you, you're talking about a guy. Um, Allen has been to the playoffs. Darnell has not. Mm-hmm. So he ended up leading his teams to the playoffs. You got a team in the, in the division that most experts are picking to now win the division. Right. Now, are you saying now by ranking him third, that he is going to be the least likely, likely reason why his team makes the playoffs? Is that, well, is that what they're effectively saying by putting him third in the division? Yeah, I don't know if maybe they forgot, like, this. if this was a worst-to-first ranking, 
right? Because if I'm taking a look at the depth at the depth chart of the Jets, here's here's what they got. They got Bell, Le'Veon Bell starting at running back. Course, All right. Yeah. Right. Rashad Perryman, Jamison Crowder. Yes. Denzel Mims. Those are your starting wideouts, according to ESPN.com. Uh, who else do they have? They got a fourth there. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, Josh Dotson. Josh, I mean, I, I like the. Oh, I almost said it. Oh, said it. oh no! Don't do it. Almost like the potential of Mims and Dotson. Yeah, but then you counter that with Hodges and Gabriel, along with. I'm right. oh, sorry, <laughs> just only Stefan Diggs, uh, Cole Beasley, and John Brown. Right, right. And so, then you go over to Miami, and Miami has Jordan Howard slash Matt Breida, which I, the uh, Matt Breida signing is a good – that's a good sign. I hate that with a passion. No, that's a good signing. Um, and then Devontae Parker, who is – I mean, is he ever going to be good, like really good? Preston, Will, Preston Williams and Albert Wilson – their fourth is Alan Hearns slash Jakeem Grant. Like, how can you pick Miami or the Jets over Buffalo? <laughs> you mean how Alan, can you do it? Alan Hearns, the AFC version of Lance Moore. <laughs> Lance Moore. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't think Lance Moore was ever on Dancing with the Stars, though. Oh, Alan Hearns God. was. Uh, was. Anyway, I, you got some big body wide receivers in Miami. You have some talent that could be good. In, in New York. However, what has already been established in Buffalo should outrank both of those. Now, unless they're heavily going on potential and they're heavily looking at things that happened in the past, uh, I don't I don't foresee that at all. However, I, I still keep harkening back to the fact is who's call, who's pulling the trigger for these guys. Right. Are you are you? It, does this? And maybe this is a cliffhanger. Is this, a, is this more of a knock on Dable than it is a knock on Allen? I, I don't, don't get me going down the don't get me going down the Dable train. I don't train. want to go down the Dable train either, but and I don't want to troll hashtag nation. I apologize if I open up a can of worms here. However, if I could borrow a line from Chris Berman, you know, I don't I don't know if that's the case. Because you look at what Chan Gailey has done. I mean, Tua's probably not even going to start. I don't no. understand how you rank him. No, right. No. Okay, does that, mean, does that mean if you, we were still ranking this list, Josh Rosen would be ahead of Jared Stidham? <laughs> like, what the, What are we talking about here? Like, what is... Oh, I don't get it. I don't... It's just adds, it just adds more fuel to the fire for Buffalo and the people of Buffalo and the team of Buffalo. Because, like, you're sitting there and saying, oh, these quote-unquote experts are saying that you're third in, the, in your own division. And... The kid could conceivably be one of the top three quarterbacks in his conference if things if he progresses to the level that people hope he does. I gotta understand. Well, I, people hope he does. And this is the season of no excuses, Mario. So let's just call it what it is. Exactly. Right? There's no enough weapons that there's no more excuses. Yep. That's it. You can't say, well, it's development. You can't say, well, we're keeping it simple. We've got some new guys. We just completely rebuilt the offensive line. No, all, all that's in the past. Off the all table. in the past. Off the table. Yeah, your, your offensive line is back in whole. The yes. whole thing is back. Yes. You know, like this is the season of no excuses, and that's all there is to it. You, you cannot, if you're Josh Allen, this is the biggest season of your career. Because there's no excuse. They've done everything they can to give you every tool possible. And I, while Miami has tried and while the Jets have tried, there's no way that their talent level is on par with Buffalo's this season. I, I know I'm a Bills fan. I just don't foresee it any other way. I, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. But I just don't I don't get it. Yeah, I just don't see it because of the reason is this. If they were, and, and, and you know, we'll, we'll throw this question out to Hashtag Nation as well. If they were judging on potential. Allen, at the very least, is number two in the division. At the very least. Okay. Because if you're judging on potential of the quarterback, Allen has an immense part. But like you said, it's a make or break year. If you want to judge on potential of a quarterback, and you even said at the onset of the show, what he could do with his legs is far better than any other guy in the division. Right. 
okay, what could Tua do? I mean, he's got Bo Jackson's hip. What are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, um, so yeah. Also, as I said earlier, if you're any Dolphins fans are watching this, <laughs> you might want to go to the yeah. channel. I don't know why you're here. Um, but that being said, let's throw this to the chat. I want to throw this one to the chat. I want to say, listen, chat. Do you do you think that this is more of a knock on Allen or a knock on Dable with why these experts ha- happen to rank Allen? Most of the experts rank Allen third as the third best quarterback in the division. I'm interested to see what they say. <laughs> 